Hello everyone, uh, back again for another video and in this video I'm going to go over how to do the simple step-by-step -step movement in a 2D tile map game. It's uh, it's pretty straightforward and real, real easy uh, once you get the hang of how to do this one. Um, so what we're going to do is let me show you how it works first over here in the game and then we can go from there. So if I hit the over key, um, it's just the simple step by step. I mean, you've seen a lot of these uh, 2D games that have that type of step to where you can just keep moving, um, you know, one full step at a time. And you can add a lerp or something else to kind of make it more of a gradual move. Um, I'll leave that up to whoever wants to use it. It's, it's kind of one of those things where this is just more of a template to get you started. Now that we see how this works, um, going step by step, what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to go through this and we'll kind of show how you end up moving step by step instead of uh, just randomly uh, being offset or wherever you may land. Um, so up here in the top is where I'm starting. I'm using an update and what this update is doing is the very first thing it's going to do is check for any key. So any key can be anything from a mouse movement to up, down, left, right, you know, any of the character keys. I'm just checking for anything. It doesn't matter what it is. And the reason I'm doing this is a lot of people will create this massive flow. I've seen, seen quite a few people do it where you're, where you're using the, uh, the get key and then you say, okay, well, I want this one key. And then they build the flow and then have a whole series of these get keys in there. And that, that doesn't seem like it's a very good idea. And I say it doesn't seem like a good idea because that's what I did myself when I first started. <laughs> it just becomes so cumbersome and unmanageable that you really have to rethink the whole thing. Um, my, my first flow back in... Uh, probably it was early early February when I first made the movement one it was massive I mean it was probably I don't know, five times the size of this thing um, just to do the exact same thing I'm doing so it was a huge flow and this is kind of what I came up with after that to better implement something that works a lot better so the first thing we do is we come through here we're doing that get any key and if it's true that we're getting a key, it doesn't matter what it is. And the reason I do this is to make sure that the update's not running constantly. We don't need to run it if it's not um, if it's not being used. We don't run it, and that's a that's a pretty good practice in general. Um, so what we do is once we find if we have a key, it's going to come through true, and what it's going to do is going to get this list of key codes. So I've got every key code um, for the directions, uh, which are just your standard controller. Um, it's all the uh, all the up, down, left, right, you know, AWSD. And then from there, what we do is we take it through this for each loop. And then we're going to get the key for each one of those. And is it one of these movement keys in this list? Yes or no? Okay, because that's all we care about. Because these two get access they're only going to care about the keys that you have assigned in your in your movement controller it doesn't matter if you push you know a T or something it's not gonna go up you see it's not gonna flow until I hit one of the actual directions so after we get that we'll have our direction so this will actually trigger up here to a cooldown and what this cooldown is gonna do is gonna, we can only move one time per second Okay, if you don't have that on, you're just going to fly across the screen. Um, we can set it to uh, a zero, and you're just going to fly across the screen, across the screen at full speed. Okay, because you have no cooldown; it's not a step. You're just you're just feeding it as fast as you can. So one second is pretty good. You can change it to whatever you want, depending on whatever speed you might like. Um, everybody's a little bit different in how their game functions, but that's one of the variables you'll need to set uh, to manage your game. Now that we have a speed set, well, what we're going to do is we're going to find out if there are any objects in our way when we move. Um, because we don't want to go through the trees, right? We, we want to make sure that we stop if we hit a tree. 
because right now these trees all have colliders on them along with this game object. So we want to make sure that we're not crossing through those through those physical barriers um, for each one of these movements. So it's, it's kind of a pre-check where I'm looking ahead before I move to make sure that if there's something there, we don't go there. Because if you don't check, you'll move there, but the collider will throw you off in some direction or it might put you in the middle here. It's just one of the things the colliders do uh, to move off of each other. So it comes down, we're gonna do the ray cast. Okay, and then we come down, we're just gonna go for a direction of one down into nowhere. So it just heads down into the, into the ground. And that direction in this ray cast is based off of the position, okay, your position of this guy and then the horizontal and vertical axis, where are they coming from and where are they going? So in this case, I have my horizontal and vertical. I come in and I create a vector two, okay? Then I normalize that vector two. And the reason I normalize it is to take it to one. I wanna have a whole number, a large whole number, because if this comes out as decimals, you're not gonna move most likely. Um, we can actually show you what that looks like. So. You can come here and I can hit this and I'm not going to move because the numbers are so small. Well, it moved that time, but it, they're so small, you'd have to hold the button down to actually move versus just pushing it once. So instead of doing that, we're just going to go through and normalize it, send it to a one. Okay. And then we're going to add that value to our position. So whatever this value is, and you have to remember these are negative and positive. So whatever that value is, it's going to come down here and add it. So we come down here, um, we come down here, and what we're going to do next is we're going to round this value to make sure that it's always in the correct spot. Uh, we don't want it to happen to slip off of the center coordinate of where we are. Uh, it's very important that in a movement type situation, you're not slipping off because you'll end up drifting if you're not careful and you don't want that to happen. So now that we have that value, we're gonna take that up and we're gonna come back here to our ray cast. And that's where we end up finding if we are going to hit something or not. It's from this position, from the um, vertical and horizontal, and those two brought together to create that direction of where we will be. It's, it's a pre-check. So it comes through, it's gonna grab that ray the ray cast hit which is the value of the object. So if it's not null, we don't want it to do anything, okay? It needs to be a null or else we don't want to move at all. So this is where something like a, a mask may come in handy because there are certain things you'll want to step on top of uh, and you don't necessarily want every single collider that hits to stop you. So that's where you'll end up using a raycast with a mask on it to make sure you're only hitting the correct ones. But after that, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna set the position. And once you're set to position, you're there. Um, it's, it's really, really quite simple, quite easy. Um, this setup is really straightforward, but there's a one caveat to this. I have my grid set to zero, zero. Um, when you first bring in a tile map, you're gonna be at 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And everybody's different in how they do this. Um, you don't necessarily have to remain at the 0.5. Um, but if this is the case that you're sitting on right now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take this value, get the X and Y out of it, and then concatenate a 0.5 on the back of it. You don't want to try and do any math. It's, not, it's just not worth the effort to do that. It's easier just to concatenate 0.5 to whatever that value is and you'll be in the right spot so all right so other than that i think that's pretty clear um you'll have one variable which is really handy on how fast you move so it's it's really kind of it's one of those things that's really really easy to manage um so pretty useful i think and i hope everybody enjoys have a good one